Hey everybody, Jordan here with Sandcraft Motorsports DIY installation. Today, we're going to be installing a set of upgraded DRTV wheel bearings in Polaris RZR. We're gonna start by raising the vehicle and supporting it on stands. With the vehicle supported, we're gonna go ahead and remove the first wheel. The next step is to work our way from the outside in. We're gonna start by removing whatever cotter pin device you have and removing the axle nut. Now I'm going to move into the rock deflector on the brake. Now we're going to remove two caliper hanger bolts. Now we're going to remove our outer tie rod end hardware. After the hardware is removed, we're gonna give it a little shock to separate the taper seat. Now we're going to remove our lower control arm hardware from the ball joint. Quick note, I forgot to mention, after removing the caliper hanger hardware, you can remove the brake hub and rotor assembly. Now we're going to remove the upper ball joint pinch bolt. And when you actually remove the hardware from the vehicle, be ready to catch the knuckle. Now that we have the hub to the bearing press, what we're gonna do is make sure that our inner groove is nice and clean, free of any debris, because when the bearing is being pressed out, it will use that to score the surface. I'm just gonna use a standard set of snap ring pliers. Remove the snap ring. And now a little trick that I found for people that don't have, say, a perfect circle cut in their table and they're using just pressing plates. So I've actually got three of the four actual hub mounting bolts here, and I use them to create an artificial table. Now that way I can use almost any shape table. From here, basically we're going to be pressing right on the inner race in hopes that it will force the whole outer race out as an assembly. So from here, we're just going to set it on our table. Using a large pressing slug. And just press from the inbound to the outside. From this point, what we need to do is clean up the bore on the inside, because not only is it a press interference fit, but we're also going to be applying a bearing retaining compound. So we need to have a clean surface. Uh, my preferred method is a uh, chucked up wire brush uh, versus say sandpaper because we don't want to remove a lot of material because again it is a press interference fit and we want to leave as much material as we can while just simply cleaning the surface. So the most important part of cleaning out the bearing pocket is getting down into these grooves right here. So there's going to be a residual leftover. Uh, retaining compound, unless the bearing carrier is brand new. But you definitely need to use a straight razor or a scribe or something and remove all of this retaining compound. So in preparation for pressing in our new bearing, you can use a brake parts cleaner, edge degreaser, something of that nature, to remove all the last little bit of grease and oil. And then I'm also going to wipe down the brand new bearing. We're gonna use green. We're also going to put it inside of the hub. This is also going to act as a lubricant for pressing. And what I've got here is the old wheel bearing that I've removed one half from just simply with a pry bar. Just pop this end right out. And this is actually going to act as a perfect pressing tool for our new bearing. Want to make sure that your bearing is all the way flush with the snap ring ledge. Snap ring, we're going to install this one with the flat side down towards the bearing. The tampered side facing up and out. I'm going to start the installation of the knuckle by slipping over the CV and collecting the upper ball joint. And we'll go ahead and collect the lower ball joint. Nut washer on the back side. Installing the tie rod. Okay. 
If your CV axle has the through holes for a cotter pin, you want to orient them opposed to the studs so you can easily install a cotter pin and use tooling to remove it for service as well. Now our caliper goes on. Making sure that you haven't twisted the hose. High strength thread locker. Caliper rock guard goes on. So for the finishing touches of installing the DRTB wheel bearing, we are not going to be using the factory equipment because we have supplied a very torque specific adjustable nut. We're gonna start by taking our nut, going to apply a little bit of anti-seize, no washer, Torque wrench set to 24 foot pounds. So the reason we rotate it back and forth is because you're actually compressing six different components. And when you roll it back and forth, you're seating everything, making sure it's actually bottomed out to a zero lash. Once you have at least 10 revolutions and you've met your final torque, it's time to put the locking bolts in place. Going to add a dabble of red thread locker, three millimeter Allen, metal lock nut, and a seven millimeter wrench. Now that the installation is complete, we just wrap it up by putting the wheel back on and we'll bring the vehicle to the ground. The starting point for the rear wheel bearing replacement is first, if your vehicle has limit straps, you wanna unhook it from the suspension so that it doesn't have a torsional effect while you remove the radius rods. Now we're going to raise and support the vehicle. Now we can remove the rear wheel. So we're going to work our way from the outside in when removing the bearing carrier. We're gonna start by removing the axle nut retainer and then the axle nut. If you have a brake hose protector, you wanna remove that so it doesn't get damaged during service. Now we're going to remove the lower radius rod bolt through the bearing carrier. Remove the upper carrier. Now that we have the radius rod hardware removed, we're going to undo the brake caliper hanger bolts. Once the caliper is out of the way, we can remove the wheel hub and brake rotor assembly. Now that the trailing arm is only suspended by the shock and the sway link, we're gonna swing it out and pull the CV out of our way and we can access the hub mounting hardware. All right, just before putting the carrier back onto the trailing arm, you want to clean both mating surfaces of the bearing carrier and the control arm and you want to install all four bolts loosely before tightening any of them. So now we're ready to stab the axle back in through the bearing carrier, but you just want to make note that when you spline the hub on, you want to orient the cross through holes for your cotter pin and retainer to be opposed to your lugs so that you can get tools in and out. Now that the hub is on, we're going to put our upper radius rod in position and now we can put our brake caliper back on.
Now that our caliper hanger hardware is tight, we can install our lower radius rod. Now our hose protection. Being as how we've installed the DRTB bearing kit, we are no longer going to be using the factory washer, castle nut, or retainer. We're going to be installing the 12 point with lock bolt. Now we're ready to reinstall the rear wheel. We're going to lower the vehicle and then reconnect the limit strap. And that wraps up our DRTB wheel bearing installation. You just want to make sure that you go ahead and retorque to 24 foot pounds after your first ride. Just make sure everything's seated nicely. Thanks for watching. Like always, enjoy the ride.